Thank you, Master. Can you take some more preaching today? Hmm? Well, the first part was important. It was. And it is. Why don't you say it one more time? This is my church. Okay, I like to hear you say that. Would you go to Mark, the 11th chapter? And if you didn't bring a Bible with you this morning, hold up your hand. Our ushers have extra Bibles. We'd be glad to let you use one of ours and turn to Mark 11. Mark 11. Let your eyes rest on the words. How many believe the Lord could say something to you this morning that you didn't know? That you hadn't thought about? Something that just straightened up something that had been wrong in your thinking? Give you an answer that would cause things instead of not working to begin to work. If things are not working, it's not God's fault. If we're not getting the right results, it's not on God's end. He's perfect. Perfect. Doesn't need to change. And therefore does not change. Us, on the other hand, (laughs) we don't know much. Even folk who know a lot compared to somebody else know hardly you know anything at all compared to him. My father in the faith, Kenneth Hagin, who's in heaven now, he uh, he used to say all the time. He said, "The more you learn, the less you see you know." (laughs) And the people who think they know so much are actually the most ignorant. It's the truth. You know, I've had people come before and want to argue about the Bible and were so adamant and haughty. And the more they talked, the more ignorant, you see, they were of the Bible. <laughs> they should, you know, if they'd have had any understanding, they, they'd have been embarrassed and went and, went and sat down. <laughs> but they, they were so ignorant of what they didn't know, they're going to come try to act like they can talk to you about it. Are you all with me? But no, God gives grace to the humble, and and, and humility is actually reality. Reality. Knowing what is true and what is right. And the truth is, He's right. He's perfect. Everything He ever said is right. And if it disagrees with what you say, you're wrong. (laughs) Every time. And if anybody needs to change here, it's always you. I've had people look at me and go, well, I'm always wrong, and I'm tired of being wrong all the time. Well, don't change the fact that you're wrong. It's because you get tired of it. (laughs) Tired of being wrong. Well, straighten up and get right. Then you won't have to be tired of being wrong. (laughs) Oh, boy. Mark chapter 11. (laughs) You know, God's having to put up with all of us. Makes you feel for him once in a while. (laughs) Mark 11, 22. For some weeks now, we've been on this subject. Faith to receive. And this is our text here in verse 22 and uh, 23 and 24. Jesus had uh, walking past a, or down, down a path saw a fig tree and he was hungry and he came to see if there was some fruit on it and there was nothing and so he spoke to it. He said, no man eat fruit of you from now on, hereafter forever. And nothing happened that you could see, and yet something happened when he spoke. Jesus is our example. Are we to live like this? If we want things changed in our life, what should we do? Centuries of unscriptural tradition has taught Christians to beg God. Isn't it true? When you need something, and something needs to change in your life, centuries of unbiblical preaching and teaching and tradition has taught Christians beg and beg harder 
and beg longer and see if you can get enough people to beg with you. Right? And call it prayer. But it's just begging and pleading in anxiety and fear, desperation. That's not how the Lord operated. And it is not how He taught us to operate. The just shall live by faith. Faith is not a beggar. Believers are not beggars. Y'all believe this this morning? The psalmist said, I've been young, now I'm old, but there's something I've never seen. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen his seed out begging bread. Why? Don't need to. Don't have to. Believers are not beggars. Preachers, you don't have to beg for money. Ministers, you don't have to beg for money. Wives, you don't have to beg your husbands for money. Husbands, you don't have to beg your wives for what you want. Young people, children, you don't have to beg your parents for what you want and need. You don't have to beg anybody. You don't have to beg the banker. You don't have to beg your boss. Oh, it's wonderful. You can stand up. Be a free man. Be a free woman. Lift up your head. How am I ever going to get it? Believe God. It's a new concept to millions, but it's the best way to live that there has ever been on planet Earth. But you've got to quit your begging. Got to quit your begging. The Lord did not tell us to come beg Him to save us. He didn't teach us to come beg Him to meet our needs. He didn't teach us to come beg Him to make the devil leave us alone and make the devil stop destroying our life. You can't find Scripture to support these things. And yet there are millions more Christians believe that than this. It's sad. But it's also why many people are praying, 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 i.e. begging, 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 and not getting results, not getting their needs met, failing. Jesus didn't beg anybody for anything when he walked out that day. He spoke to that tree, didn't he? And he told it what to do. He's not praying. He's not talking to the Father God. He's talking to a tree, isn't he? He spoke to the wind and waves. He spoke to demons to leave and they obeyed him. He spoke to sickness. He spoke to fevers and they obeyed him. Now a lot of people have said, yeah, but now that, Brother Keith, that was Jesus. And he could do that because he's God. Well, that leaves a wrong impression. He is God and always was God, always will be God. God manifested in the flesh, but Philippians tells us he laid aside his mighty weight and power. He emptied himself and became like other men. When Jesus was walking in the earth, he did not walk as God. He did not operate as God. He operated as a man. And he showed you and I how to do it. Come on, do you believe that? He showed you and I how to do it. And he said, he that believes on me, John 14, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these shall he do. Can you say amen? amen? The just shall live by faith. The just shall walk by faith. He said, verse 22, when, when they came by later and saw this fig tree dried up from the roots, so where did the work start? It started where you couldn't see. Right? And the leaves that you could see were the last thing to change. That represents how it works. Thing, when you speak words of faith, you may not see it on the outside. But when you really speak words of faith, something happens in the realm you can't see. It happens then. The leaves on the tree represent the symptoms how you feel, the symptoms of lack, the symptoms of pain, the unpaid bills, whatever it might be, that's the last thing to change. But see, a lot of folk, not going, they're saying they're not going to believe until they see the leaves change. Well, the leaves don't change until the roots change. The leaves change because the root changed. But you couldn't see the root change. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence, the proof of things what? Not seen. Not seen. Not seen. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we, we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith, not by sight. Verse 23, he says, for verily I say to you, when he says verily, what does that mean? You can count on this. This is a truth. If it came out of his mouth, it'd be truth. But when he says verily, it's for emphasis. You need to put this as an anchor in your life and live by it every day. I say to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Is it true that you can believe something in your heart? Not doubt it, but believe it. And open your mouth and say it. And it come to pass. See, this sounds like hocus pocus to a lot of people. Sounds like, oh, that's like magic. Oh, what, what is that? You think you're just going to say it and poof, it's going to happen? Yeah, right. Jesus believed it. Jesus did it. See, what is Christianity? Christianity is Christ. Eanity. It is being a disciple of the Christ. Who? This one. This one. Now through the centuries, tradition has been developed and people have come up with all their different versions of Christianity. And they've replaced the word of God with tradition. Remember, Jesus told them, he said, you've made the word of God of none effect by your traditions. You love them better than you do the word of God. And you live by them more than you do the word of God. And, and millions do that today. And we're not to judge them, we're to judge ourselves to see that we're not doing that. I had a lady one time, I'd preached a message, and she came up annoyed. And she said, well, yeah, but you, you she said, I... You were saying all these things. She said, but you know, it's just like the song says. I said, the what? She said, the song. You know, it, and she quoted a verse out of a hymnal that was unscriptural. Just because it's in the hymnal doesn't mean it's right. Just because people play it on Christian radio or Christian TV and call it contemporary Christian, or classical Christian, or old time gospel music, or modern gospel music, does not make it true and right. People write songs from where they are. So their songs are going to be more or less scriptural depending on how scriptural they are and their life is. And there's some songs that the chorus is great and verse 1 and 2 is great, but verse 3 is junk. And how are you going to know the difference? Only one way. If you got your little nose in this book, on a daily basis, and you know what to compare it to. Elsewise, you're going to be easily duped, and you're going to go around singing a lie because it's got a catchy tune. You like the rhythm and professing stuff over yourself that is opening the door to the enemy, calling it a Christian song. One thing let me, let me caution you about, in, in a lot of our modern Christian music, it is about want and need. I want, I need you, I want you, I need you, and that's the emphasis, and that's not good, because it's not faith. The Bible doesn't tell us we just need God, we have God. Right? 
And one of the biggest things we need to get in our mouth and, and confess, and singing is a great form of confession. You'll sing something more times than you'll say it normally. You need to be singing, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. My God supplies all my needs. He's made me holy. By His stripes I'm healed. I can do all things through Christ. Instead of, I need you, God. I need you, God. Well, when you get through singing that, where are you? Where are you? Faith comes by hearing. What if you sing, I need you, Lord, a thousand times? Then your faith in your need for God is high. That does not put you in victory. We do need God, but we have God. Some of the old songs, Don't Forget Me, Precious Jesus. <laughs> he ain't going to forget you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Right? <laughs> Examine what you are singing. Examine what you are saying, what is coming out of your mouth. I don't care how old it is. I don't care how many millions of people love it and sing it. Is it Bible? Is it true? Is it putting faith in you? Is it a direct declaration of truth and confidence? Or is it just an emotional thing that you're not going to be any better off when you get through with it? He said, Whoever will say and not doubt in his heart, but believe that what he says comes to pass, he will have whatever he says. Go to, hold your place here and go to Matthew, please, 22. Matthew 22. This is Faith Life Church. And we live by faith. And we walk by faith. We don't know everything. We had not done everything perfectly, but we got a heart to. We got a heart to follow God fully, right? And if we didn't do it by faith yesterday, we're all about learning how to do it by faith today. Yes. Right? Yes. And get in faith and live this way. Yes. Morning, noon, and night because without faith, it is impossible to please him. So that means we got to do it in faith. Or else why you might as well not do it. For all the good it's doing, got to be in faith. Every day, every hour, every way. And you can. It's not as difficult as the enemy tried to get you to believe. You, you can do it. It's actually the life of rest. We which have believed do enter into rest. In Matthew 22, I want to just reaffirm something to you. People say, well, that was, uh, that was Jesus. You know, he could speak to the wind and the waves. That was Jesus. He, he could do that because he's the son of God, you know. He created this stuff and he can speak to it and change it. Well, he's operating as a son of God, as a man. You and I have been born again. We've been made sons of God. Is that true? Yes. And we've been called to walk in victory. We, Romans says, we are to reign in life by, by Christ Jesus, the anointed one. How did he do it? He did it with his faith. He did it with his words. How are you and I going to do it? With our faith and with our words. Something's going wrong in your life, you ought to put a stop to it. Something needs to open up and be loosed in your life, you ought to do it. I said you ought to do it. You ought to believe it in your heart. You ought to say it with your mouth. In Matthew 22, Or 20, excuse me, 21. 21, 21 and 2. Matthew chapter 21, this is the same, uh, Matthew's account of the same happening. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say to you, are you reading with me, Matthew 21, 21? If you have faith, if who? You, you have faith and doubt not, what's the next word? You shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say to the mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. There's a whole lot of you in that verse. 
isn't there? You, but the point I wanted you to see, people say, well, yeah, well, that was Jesus. He could speak to a tree like that. But what did he say? What did he say? Jesus said, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this, do what? What he just did. Is he telling them they can do what he just did? Without a question. And bigger things than this. Isn't he? He spoke to a tree and changed a tree. He said, you could not only do that, but you see that mountain over there? <laughs> he said, if you'd speak to it and wouldn't doubt in your heart, but believe what you say comes to pass, it would happen for you. It would be done. Now, a lot of folk don't believe that. But you and I are just simple-minded enough and wild-eyed enough <laughs> to believe it, just like it's written right there. <laughs> Aren't we? Yes. And we have miracles in our life too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Somebody says, you don't, you don't think he literally means literally speaking and, and a literal tree and a literal mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't need a mountain moved right now. But maybe you don't, but there's something maybe that needs to be moved out of your life. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's depression. Maybe it's a mountain of bills. Whatever it is, quit begging and start talking. But it's not just talking, is it? Someone said, well, I told it to go, and it didn't go. I was hoping it would, but I, I wondered if it would, but... I told it to and it didn't go. You said if I told it to go, it would go. No, I didn't say that and Jesus didn't say that. That's right. What did he say? If you would say it. Don't leave the rest of the part out now. And not doubt in your heart, but believe in your heart that what you say would come to pass, then you'd have what you say. It's not just saying it. It's believing what you say. Well, where does faith come from? How? Someone, well, I've tried to say it, but it just seemed like it's a challenge for me to believe it. How, how, what's the fix for that? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Go back to Mark 11 now. Let's look at the next verse because this, this is uh, what we've been focusing on for these weeks now. Mark 11, 24. If you're a real Christian and you really live by faith, then you do some talking in your life. Don't you? Not just empty talk. You don't want to see how quick you can say something. You want to say it and believe it. Sometimes you realize I'm not ready to say that. So what do you do? Well, you, you get in the Bible. Get out that tape series or two that ministered to you. Stir up your faith. Get built up and you can tell that it's building in you. And you can tell you get to the place where you're ready to say it now. Why? You're ready to believe it. Believe it to come to pass. Don't say it and you don't believe it. It, it hurts your faith when you pray and don't get results. It hurts your faith when you say things and they don't happen. And it's not God's fault. What's the problem? You're praying without faith. You're speaking without faith. Oh, but when you believe it, uh, glory to God. If you believe the Word of God and you act upon the Word of God, something's got to happen. Got to. Are you with me now? I mean, if you act on the Word about being born again, you got to get born again. If you act on the Word of God about being healed, you got to get healed. If you believe and act on the Word of God and speak the Word of God about your prosperity, you've got to prosper. It's got to happen. God cannot lie. He's got to perform His Word. Cannot fail. Cannot. Somebody say amen. amen. I believe it. Verse 24, he said, Therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire, what would that cover? Whatever you desire. Talk about a blank check. <laughs> Whatever you desire. 
I've had people try to get sassy with me. What if I desire $10 billion? And I'm just going to say, I believe I receive $10 billion. Is it going to happen? No. No. It ain't going to happen for you because you're making fun of the Bible. You don't believe it. Why don't I and why don't you in our church, why don't we just claim $5 billion cash to come in next week instead of a million? God could do it. God could do it without making a phone call. Couldn't he? He could move $100 billion to us in an afternoon. I sure wish he'd do it. Don't come by wishing. <laughs> I could use it, Well, Don't come by needing. God responds to faith. But well, I'm asking you, why don't we claim a billion instead of a million? We could say it. Just put a B in the front instead of an M. Huh? Easy change to say. But see, if you and I are just saying it and we don't really expect it, then it's just empty words. There's no faith there. But I can believe for this million. How about you? I mean, it's happening. We're here. And God meets us where our faith is. The limitation is not what he's able to do. The limitation is what we're able to believe. Can you see that? In your own life, you've got to watch that. I know it served with Brother Kenneth Hagin for years. Uh, he began to say, we're going to have one-time offering in this ministry of a million dollars. One-time offering. He said it for months and months and months. Years. And uh, here come a fellow in one of the big meetings, two cashier's checks for $500,000 a piece. Million dollars. There it is. After that, he began to say, we're going to have come into this ministry a one-time offering, $2 million. Why didn't he say $5 million? Why didn't he say $10 million? Why did he start with one instead of two? Actually, he started with $10,000. I know the history of it years back. But at this point, he's been in the ministry for some years, and his faith has grown. And he said it for, I don't know, two or three years or so. And I was there the morning that it came in. I was monitoring his class because sometimes when he's out of town, I'd teach in his place. And I was in the speaker's room, and he came in. He looked at me. He said, we got it, boy. I said, what? He said, it came in. Two million dollars. One offering. Ah, oh, we shouted, we praised God. Because, I mean, you can do something with that. Right? That means projects done. And, and so that afternoon, I'm shouting about it. I'm shouting about it. And, and, and uh, I, got, I remember distinctly, I went out the back. I got in my car. I'm about to go to lunch. And the Lord said, what are you saying? I thought, me? <laughs> what am I? What am I saying? I'm asking you that today. What are you saying? Well, I had not really been saying much. Just whatever the Lord wants, that's cop out. That's the lazy way. And it doesn't work. You can't leave up to him what he's left to you. Well, it is just up to him. No, it's not. No, it's not. What you get is not up to what he's able to do. It's what you're able to believe, what you're able to receive. He asked me pointedly. I knew it was him. I don't mean I heard an audible voice, but he said, what are you saying? What are you saying? I knew what he's saying to me. 
He wouldn't have said it unless I needed to make a correction. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I hadn't been saying much of anything. Just kind of vague, bouncing along. God meets my needs. And he said, yeah, what are you saying? You see it working. You've seen it work twice here on a big scale. What are you saying for you? I thought, okay, all right. I went back. Phyllis and I talked about it. We claimed how many partners for our ministry? 25. 25. So why didn't you claim a million? Wasn't where my faith was at. We claimed 25 partners. Now, the first thing the Lord did with us, you be a good partner. Yes. So faithfully. And in, so we increased our sowing to other ministries. We, we said we're going to be better partners, and we claimed our partners. The 25 came in. We claimed uh, 100. We claimed 1,000. We claimed 10,000 and, and 50,000. Glory to God. Are you listening? And we're claiming more. But uh, what are you saying? In your life, in your home, in your business, you need to start where you are. You need to say, I'm claiming an extra $100 above what I normally get through the week. Do what's real to you. I'm claiming an extra 1000 this month. Right? I'm claiming an extra 10000 well, Wherever your faith is, don't be idle. Put your faith on it. Only do what's real to you. Even if it sounds small, you can always increase it later. Right? You get that, that comes in. That's all right, it'll encourage you. Then you can increase and go up. Say it out loud, what am I saying? You need to be saying something concerning your increase and concerning the, uh, where you're going. He said in verse 24, Therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire, when you pray... Do what? Believe. Now he's talking about faith, living by faith, having faith in God. One way you have faith in God is by speaking to things and believing what you say. Here's another way. It's an operation of the same, different operation of the same faith. What things soever you desire when you pray. This is releasing faith in prayer. What do you do? Believe what? Not just believe in God. Believe specifically that you receive them. Them what? The things you are praying about. Believe you receive them and what else will happen? You shall have them. We looked up that word receive. It literally means take, T-A-K-E. Believe that you take them. How do you take it? Not with your hand, not with your head, not with your emotions and feelings. You believe you take it. If you saw you took it, felt you took it, you would need to believe you took it. How do you believe you take it? You already know how. How many in here believed you received Jesus as Lord of your life? Huh? You received the new birth. You didn't see it uh, with your eyes. You didn't feel it with your hand. How did you do it? How did you receive forgiveness of sin? How did you receive your righteousness in Him? By faith. You believe you receive it. The same way you did that, you can receive your healing. You can receive your needs met. You can receive your direction, your wisdom, your strength, guidance. Now go with me to the book of James, please. Do you have a few more minutes here? I think you do. Hmm? I got places to go, other meetings to be in before this day is over. And if I got time, yes, you got time. Yes, James 2. The question is what is priority in our life? The Word of God or eating? <laughs> or napping or whatever. There'll be plenty of time to do all that. Let's get this done first. James 2. James 2 and verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Let me read that to you from the... Uh, the Jewish Bible. 
It says, what good is it, my brothers, if someone claims to have faith but has no actions to prove it? Is such faith able to save him? What's the answer to that question? No. Can that kind of faith get your bills paid, get you healed, get your help? No, no. Verse 17, same uh, uh, Jewish translation. Thus faith by itself, unaccompanied by actions, is dead. Verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith, I have actions. He said, well, show me this faith of yours without the actions. You can't. I'll show you my faith by my actions. Faith to receive is revealed in action. Somebody say action. action. Verse 20, and this is the uh, New Century translation. Well, verse, actually verse 26. 26. Just as a person's body that does not have a spirit is dead, so faith that does nothing is dead. Faith that does nothing is dead. Say that out loud. Faith, Faith that does nothing is dead. Is there such a thing as dead faith? Obviously there is. Will dead faith get you saved and healed and delivered? It, it will not get anything for you. Dead faith. What's the difference between dead faith and living faith? Living faith acts. Acts on what it believes. Living faith acts. You know, Brother Smith Wigglesworth, who lived years ago, influenced on a lot of people. It is said that he had 20-some people raised from the dead in his ministry. 20-something. Somebody say, wow. Wow. <laughs> he would, uh, it, it is said he's an Englishman and, and not educated. And it's said that sometimes he'd walk back and forth across the, the podium for just minutes at a time going, faith is a hat. Faith is a hat. Faith is a hat. Act. <laughs> faith is an act. And sometimes he'd just shout, first one down is healed. Somebody jump up and run down, get healed. <laughs> Was running down to the front what healed him? No. no. What, what healed him? An act of what? Why did they jump and run? Because they believed something. It was their faith that healed them. Somebody said, well, it was God that healed them. That is true, but if it's just God, he's everywhere. Why isn't everybody healed? Well, it wasn't his will to heal everybody. That's a lie. I said, that's a lie. The thing is, it's not just up to God. He set it up to where we receive what, what, he, has been, what he has provided by his grace. We must possess by our faith. Lay hold of it. Say it out loud. Faith is an act. Faith is an act. Say it again. Faith is an act. Again. Faith is an act. One more time. Faith is an act. What if you say you believe, but you don't do anything? It's a dead faith. Produces no results. No results. And that's what's confusing to a lot of people. They say they believe, they go to church, they play tapes and CDs, but they're, they're not acting on what they say they believe, which means they don't believe it enough to act upon it. When we say we believe we receive, that's what follows. You act on it. Let me give you these four things. We're talking about this morning now, and, and, and I'm telling you, you got time for this. How to get miracles. How to get your miracle. How to do it. I'm telling you, a, a, a fail-proof thing works every time. How to get miracles in your life. How to get the miracle you need and desire. 
Number one, you must hear from Him. You must hear from God. You must hear from Him. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith comes by hearing. A man can take or receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. How are you going to find out if it's his will or not? You've got to hear from him. How are you going to find out what you can receive and what's, what's yours, what you have a right to, what you can lay hold of? You must hear from him. Some things you, you can read right out of the Bible. It, it's there. Other things, specific things, you know, can you get that car? Can you get that property? Can you get that promotion in that place? You've got to hear from him personally by the Spirit of God. But when the Spirit of God speaks something to you, that's God. I said, that's God. That's the Word of God. And once you have heard from him, now you can have faith. Somebody say, number one, one. must Must. hear from him. Number two, you must choose to believe it. Faith is a choice. You've heard people say, well, I I just can't believe that. You ever heard somebody use that phrase? I I just, I can't believe that. That's a lie. Untrue. By very nature of what faith is, there's no such thing as anybody who can't believe something. Anybody can believe anything. Anybody. Because believing has got nothing to do with what you see or what you feel. Believing is a choice. It's a choice. If I told you something and you say, oh, Brother Keith, I just, I just, I can't believe that. It's not true. What did you just tell me? What'd you just tell me? You, you're saying, uh, I'm looking at you. I'm hearing what you're saying, but I just don't think you're telling the truth. I just don't think you're right. I don't think you know what you're talking about. You've chosen not to believe me. Belief is a choice. Right. How many believe in Jesus in here today? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Come on, let me see it again. Have you, have you physically been to heaven? Have you seen him? Were you there when he was crucified? Were you there when he was raised from the dead? <laughs> What'd you do? You just chose to believe all that. How many believe he's coming again? Huh? Are you confident? He's coming again. How, how, what makes you so confident? What proof you got of it? He said so. And you chose to believe that. We can choose to believe God on anything. It, it, no matter how far-fetched it seems to our mind, we can choose to believe it. Or not to. Number one, you must hear from Him. Number two, what? You must choose to believe what He said. Number three, what we've been talking about for weeks now. Not only must you believe it, what else must you do? You must believe not only that it's true, that he's right, you must believe that you receive it. That you receive what he has bought and paid for, what he has done. If he says, by my stripes, you are healed. If he says, I took your infirmities, I bore your sicknesses, I carried your pains, you have a choice now. Right? You believe it or you don't. You have to choose. If you say, I believe that. I believe it with all my heart. I believe he took my infirmities, he bore my sicknesses, he carried my pains. Just like he took my sins and iniquities. Just like he took the chastisement of my peace. I believe he did it. I believe he did it. I believe he did it. You can say that for three years and stay sick. Got to go a step further. Right? How many of those people, uh, 
could, could come to church. There's people in town could say, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I believe he's born of a virgin. I believe he came and died on the cross. I believe he paid the price for the sins of the world. I believe God raised him from the dead. I believe he's coming again and can be lost. Right. That's right. They can believe all that and be lost. Why? You must receive. You must believe you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You must believe you receive what he's done for you, for yourself. I believe I receive it. So number three, you must believe you receive it. And number four, anybody know what we're getting to now? If you believe it, if you believe you have received it, what comes next? You must act like you have received it. <laughs> oh, come on. You, you must take steps to possess what you say you believe you receive. Spirit-led steps. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Faith is an act. Faith is an act. Faith without action is, is dead. You know, that's what we've been confessing ever since we started around here. It's a, I'm using a different word, but it's the same thing. In Matthew 7, don't turn there, but Matthew 7, 21, Jesus said, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Somebody say, doeth. Say it again, doeth. It ain't just the talkers. It's the doers. You remember his own family. His mother and brothers came and stood outside the door. And they said, would you tell that boy to come out here? He has lost his mind. <laughs> right? They thought he had lost it. And Jesus didn't even get up and go. Did he? They said, they said your mama and your brothers and stuff's out there. And they, they said, come, come. Well, see, they were, be, they were being disrespectful of the ministry or they'd have been in there with him hearing the word of God. They want him to stop ministering and come out there and chat with them because we're family. What did he say? He didn't even get up and move. <laughs> he, he looked around. He said, uh, I got brothers right here and sisters and mothers. Didn't he say that? He said, my mothers, my brothers are these which hear the word of God and do it. That's Luke 8, 21. Put it up on the screen. Luke 8, 21. What did he say? My mother, my brothers are these that hear the word of God and do it. What do we know by them doing it? They really believe it. They really believe it. How, you, how we know you believe it? You do it. Settles all questions. You wouldn't have acted on it if you didn't believe it. That's why you hear us all the time saying, I'm a doer. I'm a doer. That's why our little ones look at you and go, I a doer. <laughs> You're a what? <laughs> doer. <laughs> I told you I was in another state doing a meeting. And the grandson of one of the, pa the pastor where I was he said, tell Brother Keith what you told us. And he, he came and said, I do. I said, what? I do. I do work God. He said, I said, I didn't get him. I said, what's he say? He said, he said, I'm a doer of the word of God. You know where he got it? He got it visiting us. He was visiting us. And then the children's workers taught him that. And months later, he's going, I do it. Glory to God. <laughs> a lot of you need to go, I do it. <laughs> I'm a doer of the word of God. That's the only people who get results. The only people who get results are the doers. Why would you do it? Back up. Because you heard what God said. And you believed what he said. And you believed you received what he said. And you acted on what he said. 
Can you say glory to God? Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go to John, second chapter. Get ready to be stirred up a little more. I'm not ready to turn you loose yet. I took a little extra time in the front, but it was right. But I don't need to cut this one short because of it. Just a few more minutes. Stay with me. It'll help you, sides. So that'll do you good. I'm a doer. I'm not just a meeting goer. I'm not, I don't just warm the seat. I, I don't just play uh, CDs and watch DVDs. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. How many know you should only talk about praying for so long, then you should pray. You should only talk about walking in love for so long, then you should actually walk in love. You should only talk about forgiveness up to a point and then... Forgive. If you talk, I mean, you might preach a mean game on forgiveness, but it's you. Don't, if you don't forgive, what good is that? And that's what he's saying. Faith without doing, faith that does nothing, is dead, useless. Say it again. I'm a doer, not just a hearer only. I'm a doer. What he says, I believe. I receive, I receive, and I do. And I do. You think your life would be different? You'd act upon that every day? Yeah. Live like that every day? Oh, have to be. Have to be. John 2, are you there? Some of the greatest words, instructions for miracles that have ever been spoken. I mean, a four-year-old could understand it. How to get a miracle. And you and I are going to read it and believe it and receive it and do it. <laughs> Say it one more time. Hear it. Hear it. Believe it. Believe it. Receive, it. receive it. Do it. Do it. What happens then? Miracles. Miracles. John 2, are you there? John 2 is the... Uh, Marriage feast in Canaan. Jesus was there. His mother was there. His disciples were there. And they ran out of wine. Yep, wine bottles are dry. And what's a party without wine? <laughs> People don't even like to read these verses, do they? Because of all their tradition and their thinking. Jesus drank wine. I'm sorry, but there it is. <laughs> Did you feel that? Oh, watch it, Brother Keith. Watch it, Brother Keith. <laughs> They're out of wine. I'm reading the Bible. Out of wine. They have run dry of wine. And... Jesus' mother leans over and goes, you know, they're out of wine. Dry. Well, it was going to be embarrassing to the host. And he wasn't affluent enough to have the party. And he's the one that had it over at his place. And, and Jesus said, uh, woman, what have I to do with you? <laughs> My hour's not yet come. How many know we should not be led by our mothers or our fathers or our friends? or what people think or need. We should be led only by the Spirit of God. But his mother was smart. <laughs> and she leaned over to the servants that were around and tell me what she said. Verse 5, what would she say? She leaned over. And even so that she didn't say it, I might interject. She said, I'm going to tell you how to get a miracle. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how to get a miracle. What? Whatever he says to you, do it. Don't question it. Don't reason about it. Don't try to figure it out in your head. Don't try to rationalize it. Don't try to explain it. Don't wait for further explanation. Just do it. If you have to understand before you will do, you are faithless. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Yes. 
If you have to see why and understand why and wherefore and how come, well, I can't do it unless I can understand it. You could if you choose to. But you're saying is you're not going to believe. You have to walk by sight. I have to see it if I'm going to do it. Then you're not going to make it with God. You know, modern psychologists and child psychology have forbidden parents to tell their children, do it. Why? Because I said so. Oh, no, no, no. Now, you got to sit your three-year-old down and explain to them and reason with them so that they can see it. Baloney! Baloney! This is plenty good enough reason because mama said so. Daddy said so. Yeah, but I don't understand. Well, whoop de doo it's time to walk by faith. Here we go. (laughs) You going to submit and believe or you going to rebel and defy and demand and require that you understand. And see, the problem is we can't understand all the whys and wherefores that God does things. We don't have his tenure and experience and breadth of understanding. How many know there are some things some two and three year olds can ask you can't tell them? If you told them the answer, they wouldn't know any more than before you told them. They just don't have the ability to understand what you're talking about. And so instead of confusing them and wasting all your time, you just smile and go, because mommy said so. (laughs) Did you know God requires us to do this every day of our life? To do what he tells us to do? Why? Because he said so. And he knows best. And if he said do it, there's a good reason why. And we trust him. I said we trust him. We trust him. Abraham went out. What? God said leave. God said get out of here. Leave your security. Leave your friends. Leave your club memberships. Leave your hobbies. Get out of here. Go. Leave. Leave your kin folks. Leave everything. And go. Abraham said, okay. Where? He said, I'll let you know. (laughs) Now, how many folk would require that you at least know what city you're moving to? You got to tell the mover something. Then you wouldn't be in the book. Why is Abraham in the book? God said, I want you to get up and get out of here. He said, yes, sir. Where should I go? He said, I'll let you know. He said, okay. You'll let me know. Well, I'll just, I'll go that away. And if that's not working, you'll let me know. (laughs) Oh, and he's in the book. He's in Hebrews 11. Glory to God. Held up for all generations as a beacon of faith because the man left home and family and everything and went out not a clue where he was going. But did the man have miracles? Did he have miracles? Oh, next thing you know, he's rich, rich, rich in silver and gold and they had so much stuff the land couldn't contain them. And that was the smaller part of it. It was. God gave him a son who was the seed that Jesus came out of. A miracle baby. Glory to God. But now look back, look back. What did Abraham do? He heard what God said. He chose to believe what God said. He received it for himself. And what did he do? When God said go, he did it. Without questioning, without reasoning, without waiting, without requiring, he just did it in faith. What did Jesus' mother lean over and tell him? Whatever he says. I don't know what he's going to say. She didn't have a clue. But if he tells you something, do it. Do it. Somebody said do it. 
Lean over and tell your neighbor, do it. Do it. Whatever he tells you. Whatever he tells you. Do it. Do it. Another translation says, do whatever he tells you. Whatever he says, act on it. Do it. Now this happened again and again and again in the ministry of Jesus. I, I don't, don't try to turn to these. I'm going to read them to you. We're, we're just about done here. But how many know that in Jesus' ministry, he had miracles? Yes. Didn't he? Yes. I mean, he had miracles right and left. He had miracles every day. He had some of the most outstanding things. He had lepers cleansed, blind eyes open, deaf ears open, paralyzed people healed and walking. Didn't he? Didn't he? Had the dead raised. He, he, we're reading right here, the water turned into wine. He reached over and he said, he told him, he said, fill those water pots up with water. Well, that wouldn't have made sense. But they're already primed. Don't reason. Don't ask questions. Just do it. How do you get miracles? Do it. it. So they filled them up, and you know what happened? When they bore it out, I mean, it changed on a molecular level in a moment of time. It's no longer water. Miracle. But that kind of thing happened all through his life and ministry. But listen, again and again, Jesus would say something. People would have to choose to believe it and receive it, and then he'd give them a command. Wouldn't he? With the nobleman, he said, go your way. Your son lives. What's it time to do now? What's it time to do? And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken to him, and he went his way, and you know the story. His son was healed from that hour. He acted on it. The man at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus came by and said, rise, take up your bed and walk. So what did he do? Did he have to act on that? Did he have to believe something in order to act on that? He had to have some confidence. That's why he'd have just lay there and whined and cried and said, I can't, I can't. I've tried for years and I can't. That's why I'm here. No, you've got to quit all that and quit reasoning. Quit theorizing. Quit questioning. Quit wavering. Just believe it. Simple, simple. Just believe it and do it. The man born by four, rise, take up your couch. He did. Man with the withered hand, stretch out your hand. He did. Woman with the issue of blood, she came through and touched. Why? She kept saying, if I can just touch, if I can just touch. So she said it. She believed it. She did it. She was. Blind man, go wash in the pool of Siloam. He did. He went his way and came again seeing. Ten lepers, go show yourself to the priest. As they went Not as they sat and begged or cried. As they went, they were cleansed. It continued to to operate through Jesus' disciples after his ascension. Peter and John at the gate called beautiful. They said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up, rise up and walk. And he leaping up stood and walked. It happened repeatedly. It happened over and over again. And here's the good news. It still happens today. It still happens today. If you'll believe it, if you'll act on it, it'll happen for you. Stand up on your feet. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. 